want to, I know that everybody has places to go and, um, and I want to share with you this awesome trick I learned today um, with you all. So I don't know if I see, there we go. Okay. So hello everybody. I'm super, super um, happy. And well, there's two people who were on the call today. So I'm gonna jump in because I said this morning that um, last week was a bit of a, a challenging uh, week um, because I don't know, the frenzy and, and the, the challenging of no time frame, um, which is what triggers me sometimes uh, when I think of it too much. And I said to this morning's webinar, I said, I had major Zoom fatigue um, last week and this week, you know, like, and I love to see you all, but I just had major Zoom fatigue. So I skipped on a, a friend's um, Zoom um, yesterday, Tuesday. And I said that, you know, it's really strange because I see myself all the time. It's like I have a camera with my own picture because, you know, in the Zoom, we see it, ourselves. So it's like having a mirror and having my own self watching myself. So it's like, you know, getting crazy. And somebody in the webinar this morning said, no, no, there's a trick because I was trying to put a post-it on my own picture, not to see myself. And apparently if you go on the three little dots uh, next to your, in your frame, in your own frame, next to the mute, you click and you can hide your self view. And that was for me like the, the, the the cherry on the cake of the day is that you can um, I can remove myself from the equation and not having to to see myself and and, and there so that's a, a good one yeah and Olivia you you're doing your yeah the the background is another one that's a really good anyway so that was the the trick and so um, if other people have zoom fatigue I hope I'm not by myself but um, I hear you I'm, I'm there with you um, so so, and by the way, I think that's synchronicity. You have to ask the question and you have to ask for help and boom, sometimes magically the answer comes and that feels really good. So I don't know if you had all uh, the time or, or the urge or, or wanting to do the exercise from last week, which was about imagining and imagination and expanding our possibility. Um, and I hope it was fun because this week is all going to be about planning and Excel sheets that I prepared for you. So it's a square week after the imagining you are, yourself at 40 years, at 80 years old. Um, this week is going to be all about um, Excel sheets and practice. So what I've put together, but before we go into that, I want to share, um, and, and some of you know, that I've had two coaches in the past um, two years. So the first coach I hired was really nice, very nice lady, but she agreed with everything I said. And after three months, I felt that I was literally in the same place as I was, less cash in my pocket, but at the same place. And what I did is I decided that I wanted to find some, a coach that would really get me to results. And so I found, I heard about this woman who coached athletes. And not any athletes, she coaches famous soccer players, uh, Olympic swimmers. And so I thought, okay, this is somebody who's really used to results. And I hired her and we worked together. And I have to say, she made me practice and practice. And she showed me how to practice basically deliberately, meaning with mindfulness. And the idea was to really do small tasks with having the big picture in the background or in mind. And it's a little bit like, you know, what we discussed before or why, but knowing what's the big picture for you. So I'm gonna share with you what deliberate practice is. And this is um, definition that I found on James Clear. I know some of you, um, I think it's Alix uh, shared with me that they, they like James Clear. So deliberate practice refers to a special type of practice that is purposeful and systematic. While regular practice might include mindless repetition, deliberate practice requires focused attention and is conducted with a specific goal of improving performance. And that's what was interesting is that my coach reminded me that apart from Messi and Ronaldo, which are soccer players that 
at least I know, of, um, who are gifted players. The other best soccer players that are playing at you know, national levels uh, really practice beyond what is asked from the team. And they see that as, you know, not only tell, doing what their coaches ask from them, but really um, because they want to be the best players they can be. And, um, and I was looking and on James Clear's um, website, he mentions the anecdote of Joe DiMaggio, who was a um, gifted baseball player, hitter. And when he was given compliment that how, you know, he was such a natural hitter, he would angrily show um, his practice sheets. Um, and he basically practiced countless times the swing, even though he was already a natural gifted uh, player. And he continued, you know, uh, practicing swings. So what you have to know is that initially uh, practice is about showing up to the class and doing some reps, but quickly the mind will push you in automatic mode. And when the mind is in automatic mode, you kind of like do things a bit more numb, numbly, right? And that's when you have to really be more um, or reawake um, the mindset. So I'm gonna share with you a Excel sheet that is only dedicated, dedicated to job search. And I've tried to incorporate all the information as clearly but as simply as possible because it's really not in my interest to give you a to-do list or something but it's more of a support that you can um, take and remake your own and it's where you can add all the information about um, your career and i have more ideas i didn't want to overcrowd it but it's it's um, a first uh, draft and I think if you do things repetitively and, you know, not overwhelmingly, but with mindfulness and practice, um, this would really grow your career. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to share my slides. And again, I want to remind you that this is work, um, but we're in it together. I'm, I'm doing it myself. I'm, I'm doing the sheet with you. Uh, we've created some smaller groups that are, you know, help you if you want to pivot career, but if you are, you know, interested in, in retail or if you are in um, designers um, and we introduced um, the, the co-host. So we're starting next week. Everything is put in place this week and we're going to do our first test this week. And so next week you can join um, one of the groups. So you don't feel that you're doing it by yourself. Everything's good. Yeah. All good. Okay. So I'm going to share my, and there's the Slack group that I forgot to mention. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So that's in the first week. So this is um, part two of building a resilient um, career. And so I found this quote, um, the next, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. And I know it's, it's, um, you know, it's simple, but um, it's never too late. Uh, it's never too late to, to plan your career. I see somebody's in the chat. Charlotte, please let me know because I don't see the chat. Um, I'm, I'm just sending them the okay. link. Fantastic. Thank you. So this is planning the search. So the two things I want you to think of in mind is when you are thinking of your next position, which applies if you're looking for a job right now and the next job is in you know, a month or two months or, or whatever, but also if you're planning your career. If you're currently in a job, you should be planning your next dream job of your in two years, right? Or in three years, give yourself room, but today, whether you're immediately looking for a job, you're pivoting and have a short-term goal, but also if you're happy as a clam in your current position, think of where you should be in two or three years. So the two parts are time. It's true that you have to dedicate some time. Um, it's like going to the gym. It doesn't happen um, from your couch. Um, and I've created a little weekly planning. And 
I like to cut things in pieces just because they don't seem as daunting. So I'll show you in the next slide, but basically, and you know, adapt for what works for you. But on one day, you decide to apply to job description. On, a, on the next day, it's about researching companies. On Wednesday, for example, it's connecting with people or having that coffee, virtual coffee. On Thursday, it's dedicated to a new skill. And on Friday, it's about market intelligence. What I want you to do is only cut it in small because if you decide to say, oh, I'm gonna work on my search, then you know I have to connect or I have to learn about the market or I have to learn something new. It kind of jumbles a bit and you might be doing the things you like to do, but not the things you need to do, right? I mean, that's what happens with me. I'll tend to go, oh, let me research and I'll forget to connect with a new person because it means that I have to send an email, you know, put myself out there versus, you know, staying in my little uh, computer and going down rabbit hole of companies. And little things of doing each day. Each day you comment on a post just to make sure that the algorithm on LinkedIn are maintained. And for example, you invite a new relationship. So that's the per first time. And I think you have to make it small, whether it's an hour if you have time or it's 20 minutes a day if you don't have time. I know that if you have kids at home, it's challenging. I know that at the end of the day after work, it's challenging. It's like the gym, it's, ha it's challenging, but when you come out of it, you're happy you've done little, you know, little um, pluses. And the second part is measurable because again, if you can't measure it, it won't count as much. You won't feel that you're making progress. As in one of the previous um, sessions, I said, you know, it has to stretch you a little bit and you, you have to be able to look back and say, wow, I did this and this and this. So you have to be able to measure your progress and, you know, keep your own track, but maybe it's one virtual coffee. Um, and I want to talk about this specifically. That's why I put a note here. Don't ask people to pick your brain. Can I pick your brain, please, for five minutes? Don't do that. Um, I'll share an article, but basically, um, there was a New York Times article a year ago on how people are asking for virtual coffees and just saying, hey, can I pick your brain on something? No, you have to be offering of learning something, sharing information and asking, you know, I would love to exchange because I'm trying to get into this new profession, for example, or I'm trying to learning about the um, industry. Um, this is an article that I thought you would might be interested and I would love to discuss more with you, right? But picking your brain, if you are um, um, time constraint, it's one of the worst thing you can have. Like you don't know, you don't have any context. The person says, oh, can, people ask me all the time, oh, can I pick your brain on what's next for my career? No come up, tell me exactly where you, where's your pain point and how I can solve it and that I will be happy to help you. But if you tell me, oh, here's my career, like, oh, please tell me, you know, what's next for me. It's, I have to do all the legwork. If you tell me I got, you know, I really have a problem because my LinkedIn's not um, picking up or I'm trying to get into this company and I don't know which angle to come, then yeah, let's talk about it and I'm happy to give you 10, 15 minutes but just picking your brain randomly is the worst thing you can do. So create a, a, you know, measurable goals that fit you, fit for you. So virtual coffee, um, a job application, maybe two jobs application a week, and you post three things, right? And I'll show you later what kind of things you can post. So this is the, um, the um, little Excel template that I'm giving you. And I'm going to send you a link to that so you can duplicate it, take it away. So every day you see you can do, you have a to-do list. So the week of the force on Monday, it's applying for a job posting. And maybe you just put, sorry, a link to the description. No. So this is after. Uh, on, and then, you know, click if you've done a, a LinkedIn comment, just click on it. And if you've set up a virtual coffee, just put a little click. And you go down every day, you know, it might take you 10 minutes even to do that. Or, you know, you wanna spend a little bit more time, do spend a little bit more time, but just so you can say, okay, that's done. And this is, um, you know, you can remove lines if you just wanna do one thing a day. On Tuesday, it's researching 
uh, and adding new companies. So one of the comments, um, one of the issues when you search for a new position, and I've worked with some of you one-on-one -on -one, uh, separately, but the challenge, for example, is to say, um, so one of you had a, um, a spa and the idea is like, you know, what's next for me? And he's very interested in, in sleep and napping, et cetera. And I said, you know, look at all the brands that have um, these mattress brands, you know, the Hastons, the Caspers, all these make, that's a natural fit for the next step. But uh, we explored together and we looked also at hospitality because hotels, you know, have an issue, what are the mattress and, and things like that. So one of the things I would suggest is dig a little bit in your field uh, and add new companies. Uh, since I'm a recruiter in the luxury um, industry, I often have people say, oh, you know, I really want to work with Dior or Chanel. Okay, great. But what other luxury companies you want to work on? What other brands are exciting to you? You know, maybe it's Madewell who's doing new things, or maybe it's, uh, um, you know, a, a brand that's more niche. Maybe it's The Row. And often they don't know past the obvious. So I challenge always saying, you know, what is maybe a startup in your industry? What is a startup in luxury? You know, there's a great brand that is um, renting high-end uh, watches. So that's a very interesting, you know, it's kind of the real, real of watches and jewelry. Um, these are startups that that's exciting new companies that you have to research. It will give you also market intelligence. Um, again, LinkedIn comments, but maybe on Wednesday, it's sending a nice email uh, to somebody from your people list that we're going to go after. I think it's better to really thrive for quality over quantity. When you make a connection on LinkedIn, if you can say, hey, um, you know, how are you? It's good to remember you from this uh, webinar we attended together or hi, it's been a long time. We were colleagues at this uh, company. Uh, how are you? You know, just have a more deliberate conversation than just, you know, sending random connections. Maybe Thursday it's about learning. Maybe Friday is about market intelligence. And please reward yourself. So I put it in a way that, you know, it's not very long, but if you make three, four clicks at the end of the week, you should have a column all fill and it should feel satisfying. I'm all for instant gratification. So if there's ways that, uh, that work better for you, please, you know, find new ways, but reward yourself, you know, get your favorite cappuccino, get, you know, do whatever, treat yourself to whatever, um, you know, Netflix you, you like, but make it a point where you can uh, feel a sense of achievement each week. So these deliberate steps and repetitive step is what is going to increase your career. Spending time on your career is the same thing as you spend time on your health, the same thing as you spend time on the gym. You know it's just being a little attentive and a little every day and keeping going. The second part is the job description. So I'm going to show you, but there's a lot of job sites, right? I would um, suggest that you pick one or two sites. So I've listed here the obvious, which is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a great um, job uh, window. You can save jobs. You can create alerts. Uh, alerts. You can uh, research similar positions. You can apply directly. So I would say make it your main um, uh, website uh, to track all your positions. You don't need to really add anything. Um, but if you're specialized in a different industry, um, for example, for fashion, there's the business of fashion um, who adds a career website. It's kind of a more um, middle um, level searches, but there's also some great um, ones here and there. Um, but for non-for-profit, there's a website called Idealist. Uh, for the arts, it's NYFA, and for tech, there's angel.co and dice.com, which I think are very interesting because sometimes it's a lot of startups, and they're startups in the fashion industry, but they'll post on angel.co versus on LinkedIn because that's just their natural um, space for startups. So, you know, you might be in cosmetic, but they might be more, if you're looking for uh, companies that are in more um, tech, 
that link tech and cosmetic, you might have a better chance on going on dice.com or angel.co. So we're going to go into the keywords. What I want to challenge you is often what we go when we do a search is, for example, I'll put executive recruiter. Um, so we want to put our exact title in the job search um, tag tab. I would say be a bit more um, creative and maybe put just one of your skill. So I did the test um, on LinkedIn and I put um, client management because that's one of the things I do every day with my clients and it's not in my title. And all of a sudden there were some really interesting positions that came up uh, and that I had would have never seen because they didn't contain any the words recruiter or human resource, etc. So I would challenge you is that sometimes put not only your title, but also put one of the skills that you favor. So for example, if you are a store manager and you love recruiting or hiring people, then putting hiring might be might show you some uh, positions in corporate that are focusing on hiring all the teams for the stores. So it could be, you know, how you get and stretch a little bit your, um, your search. Set alerts. So let LinkedIn do the work for you. It's very easy to set alerts for any types of position. Uh, they'll come directly into your inbox. Um, look also at people also viewed um, because it will show you other opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have uh, listed yourself or you wouldn't have searched for. So for example, I clicked on a company and it, uh, it sent me to Peloton, right? Which is the bicycle company. I would have not searched for Peloton, um, but in the people also viewed were all these um, list of positions that were really interesting and that I had not thought of. Uh, research job poster. Um, the person who posted jobs, you might have mutual connection. So I saw a position at Ease Up, and maybe I'm going to show you right now the position. There it is. So this is a list of job description that I saved in the uh, job tracker um, website. So there was a position at Ease Up for head of human resources. And I thought it was interesting. I looked at the uh, person who was there and the the LinkedIn contact to whom you had to um, uh, send your resume. And people often say, well, how do I know that, you know, they received 200 resumes, how do I make mine separate, distinctive? I think that what is one of the ways is to look at the people who work at the company you're applying for. And this woman was called Maria, I think, you'll see her, her name on, on one of the slides later. Um, it happens that she and I have volunteered for the same organization. She volunteers for the New York Cares and we volunteer for the Achilles Run. So, you know, running with um, children or adults with um, eyesight issues. And so in the application, I can absolutely write to her, hey, hi Maria, you know, thank you for receiving my application. Uh, I also noticed that, uh, you know, we're in the same New York cares. It's nice to see a fellow um, Achilles runner, you know, but if you research the person you're looking for, um, you're sending your information, you can make your um, note more personal. So here I want to show you that the obvious for me was head of human resource, right, for ease up. But the second one that came up is a senior people business partner at SoulCycle. So that um, job description is basically a person who's in charge of uh, connecting with all the suppliers, all the um, staff uh, at SoulCycle, and is really um, what they call chief business, uh, chief uh, people officer, so in charge of all the culture. But the title is made that, you know, there's no recruiting in the title and there's no search, etc. So stay open. And the second one is again um, the Pelton uh, app. And I thought it was really interesting. Peloton is the company that is growing very, very well. They have quite a few jobs listed there. So I would challenge you all to add um, maybe some of those brands um, to, your, um, to your list. Um, and another one, so one of them is a client partnership manager. 
Um, so that's the one for recruiting for stores. And as you see, this is G JBC Holdings is a uh, recruiting company. So I won't have the name of the company, so it's more difficult to do the search, um, but that's a, you know, one way of um, accessing. So here, so when I do search, um, when I search for companies, I get a brief. So a client, and maybe it's, um, for example, Goyard, some of you know maybe the, the handbag company, so they'll ask me for a, um, I, I did a general manager search for them. So the way we start a search, the way I start a search is with a certain method. First, I get the job description. I want a very specific job description to whom this person reports, um, what are the direct reports, what are, um, I'm gonna look here in the chat. Um, Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the chat and now I lost there. So, um, sorry. So the, so the job description has to be very specific. When we did last week, I showed you the job description, the imagining you quit exercise, which was to create your new job description. So it was taking your old job description, eliminating what you didn't like and what you could delegate, and adding the new skills you wished you had or for your next position. So have a very strong job description for yourself. The second is a company targeted list. So when I have a company like Goya, I will start by looking at all the companies that are similar to them, right? They're competitors. I will look at companies where I can find um, similar traits of candidates. So maybe Goya is very luxury. Maybe I'll look at the hospitality industry at very uh, five-star hotels, you know, people who can really handle clientele. So this is how you create a company target list. You put the obvious, so maybe you have one company you like, look at all their competitors, and it's very easy to be done on LinkedIn because if you look at a, a company, um, you can see the also viewed and it will give you a list of their competitors, but a good Google search will do that. And look a little bit deeper on what you're choosing for. So if you're looking for Dior, maybe it's because you like the prestige. If you're looking for, I don't know, maybe a Tiffany, maybe it's for the security. It's a very large company. It's you know um, um, solid, you want security, you want a 401k, you want to be in a team that is very organized and structured. Maybe you're looking for a job for compensation. Um, so be mindful when you look at the companies, make sure that you add or you notice that of the companies you look for. But it could also be also potential personal contribution, um, which is the list of companies where you have the most chance of moving the needle. So it's often startups or smaller teams where you, know, you might be more of a jack of all trade or you might be more the person who has to be innovative and bring in new solutions. So these are different ways of looking at companies. So when you do your list, start um, noticing if you see patterns, for example, or if you have blind spots, maybe you only want um, a place where you make your own personal contribution, right? And maybe you want a startup, maybe you're open to taking that risk and being um, joining new teams. Uh, and again, uh, look for startups. I think one of the good places is to go on angel.co or dice.com and just type cosmetic, for example, if you're looking for cosmetic and see what, what comes up. Because a lot of the new startups um, are, are companies that are you know, trying to do um, uh, tech things. So, so one of the companies I was really interested in looking is Dirty Lemonade. So they do a lemonade company, but their trick is, that's the core of their business, that's what they do. But the way they do it is only by, um, you can buy them only by texting. So it's a whole new um, uh, platform that they're using, which is only by texting. And that's what their proprietary um, uh, expertise is. It's not the lemonade. The lemonade is the, the excuse uh, to using that platform. Um, then, as I mentioned, add industries where you have similar skills. So, for example, in, in retail, I said if you have really strong hiring skills, maybe HR in different companies could be a, an opportunity for you.
but in hospitality, maybe it's wellness, which is very big, um, or you know, see how you can expand your talent. I even saw a company that is called um, the the finance gym, the gym finance or the finance gym, and basically they have um, they help you with your finances. And if you're good at your finance or you've been in a financial role, you can train and become uh, a coach for the finance gym. So see what is your hard skill and see how you can um, really uh, test it in other um, areas or industries. So for this, on the second page of that Excel sheet, you'll see I'll put a list of targeted companies. So these are, you can just put the name of the company, the website and put it at the career page. You can put the industry, you can put the name and the LinkedIn um, of the person. Uh, look at the, put the opening and the LinkedIn for the position and the application status. The date you applied and maybe a follow-up or comment. So this is a way, it's a little tracker. Put all the companies you're interested or put the companies you wish to apply. And before even applying, this could be just a week where you just list the company to see some patterns. I think it's very interesting because once you populate that list, the idea is not to have a hundred names here. The idea is to be deliberate and just start refining of what really um, is interesting for you. So you see, I'm seeing you know, wellness. Um, the other one was a recruiting company um, and Azop was the cosmetic company but you can list a number of companies and start seeing, you know, okay, I'm looking for companies that really are maybe more to middle size to startups and that I would like to um, look to. And again, to keep track, uh, in the last column, what you'll see as I put, for example, so it's Maria Woods. She is the person um, who is the talent acquisition for ESA. And I saw that, you know, she volunteers also at New York Cares and we have eight mutual connection in common. So there's most likely that, you know, she will respond or I have things to share and maybe I can do a little digging of, or, you know, to see what articles she posted, what she likes and have a more significant conversation with her. So far so good? Yeah? Tell me. Okay. Thank you, Juan, for the thumbs up. <laughs> So there's after in this Excel sheet, all this is going to be on the same Excel sheet. You'll have different tabs below. So the first tab was your, um, the planning weekly, the weekly planner. The second tab is your companies. The third tab is your people. It's very important that you nurture the people who are ready there for you. So I want to give you a unfortunate information <laughs> is that recruiters are not the are not similar to coaches. The challenge is recruiters are paid to get one person in the job. They'll interview maybe 20 people for the same job, but they're only paid to get one person. So they'll interview you if they're interested in a several things. If they're interested to meet you with you for the company, they'll interview you if they're interested in knowing what's happening in your current company because they want information. And they're interested in meeting you if they're like, oh, maybe it's a future superstar or maybe I'm going to need people in that area. But most likely recruiters are not going to be the person who is going to take the time to, um, to uh, spend you know, on your career, et cetera. I love people, so I can't help myself, but you know, uh, discuss with, with candidates. I think it's the core of my business. I mean, for me, I wouldn't exist without my candidates. So I feel that I have a duty um, with my candidates, but that's not the case for most uh, recruiters. So if you have a not so good experience with recruiters, it's normal. They're not paid to be um, talking to candidates randomly. So what I suggest is to create a little bit of your dream team, a bit your, your board if you want, and it can be either a work friend somebody that you know, you respect the way they're handling their career or they've done some bold moves, um, but you know, it could be a work, a friend, and it could be a colleague. It could be, you know, just a friend. It's in, in a different industry, but that is, you know, handling their career or is um, passionate about work or is really investing her time in networking, whatever the, the, the thing. So you have work friends or ex-colleagues, et cetera. 
it's a mentor, maybe somebody you've met uh, that inspired you, um, somebody that was in the higher ups that you know thought you thought you had a vision. It could be also a mentee. I'm always, it's always interesting to have mentees because it forces you to give back and to, you know, what you do with your mentees, then you will do with your mentors. And you will value the time of your mentors more because, you know, you understand the time of a mentee takes you. So I think it's always nice to have and a mentor and a mentee. Uh, and finally, the references. You absolutely need a minimum of three people to reference. And these are very important people and you should treat them as such. The idea is that you have to speak with them on a regular basis um, and you have to give them an update of your achievements, but also of where you want to go. Because these are people who are going to be speaking on your behalf um, when you close a deal. And it's not so great to, you know, call somebody like, hey, can you be a reference? Um, I have a recruiter who's going to call you in two days or one day. Um, and thank them for their time because, you know, they'll take 20 minutes of their time to, to, to talk to a, a company. So references are very important. And I've done a little tab and you will see, you can put the name of a person, you can name their company and you can put their role. Either there's an influencer, there's a mentee, it's a reference, it's a net colleague, or it's just a friend, right? You put their email, maybe their LinkedIn. And I wanna give you a trick that I've heard and I've shared this morning. Um, a while ago, somebody told me that the way you wanna stick in somebody's brain is it's, uh, you have to stick, they have to see your name or remember your name three times within a month. If a person sees your name and if you help them with a little um, indice, a little um, uh, memory, they will remember you uh, for a lifetime. And the way it is, is that you have to, within the day you meet them, you have to send them within three days an email reminding them of the places you went. So Heather McGowan is the woman who wrote the book, The Adaptation uh, Advantage, that I mentioned to you uh, recently and that I, I used one of her slides in one of my sessions. I went to listen to her um, at a conference and at the end, I just said, hi, you know, my name is Agat, et cetera. And I was really impressed by your conference. And I don't know what we discussed, but it was something that I, we had in common. I don't know what we said. Within two days, I sent her a little email like, oh, Heather, thank you very much. Um, and it was lovely talking about, I don't know, um, flowers with you, right? And then within, so first encounter, second email, and then within ideally three weeks, you have to send them a reminder. So I sent her an, a link on email, on uh, LinkedIn, sorry, a little message saying, hey, Heather, um, loved your post. I saw you were publishing a book. I'm really excited. When is it coming? You know, this is I got from the conference. Uh, we talked about flowers. Most likely now, of all the people she met at that conference, at least she will remember my name. So the idea is that you have to be able to give a person three occasions within a month to see it, your name in writing. So this is what I'm suggesting. So do a little list. And even if it's an influencer or somebody, you know, just make sure that you send them three emails um, in a row. And you can do that with your mentees or your references. Maybe you just put a note on the date you last connected with them. Um, and it, you know, it's easy to go back to your Excel sheet and say, oh, I connected in September. Maybe it's you know, time for a follow-up and just say, hey, how are you doing? So market intelligence and learning, um, I love doing that. So I can do that forever versus, you know, contacting people just because, as I said, I can read reports on the future. I can read newsletters uh, galore. Um, I know it's my strength and my weakness because, you know, there's so much you can do with um, information. And as I said in my First, first webinars, there's a not to do list. So sometimes it's good to eliminate a little bit of the things because that doesn't generate money for me. Reading newsletters, it keeps me informed, but there's, you know, sometimes I can cut down. Um, but I'm going to show you a list of putting newsletters, podcasts, maybe influencer, influencers or writers. 
and in the learning, it's courses and book club. And I've put that tab because um, I really believe in learning. I think it's very important. And I believe in, in knowing your market. When you're going to be contacting people, um, especially if you're pivoting career or if you're looking for your next step and it's an area, a new industry or maybe a startup, if you appear that to be informed, it's a big plus for the people you meet. It's very challenging to have somebody saying, um, like, for example, I have people who come from the finance industry and say, oh, you know, I'm really excited to pivot my career and I would love to go in the fashion industry. And within three questions, I know they had know nothing about the fashion industry, you know, and that's, I'm thinking, no, it's not going to happen. I mean, you know, if they go and meet a client like that and have no background, it's, you know, my client is going to just shut the door and tell me, I got, what are you sending me? So do a little bit of market intelligence, especially if you're going to be pivoting career, just know a little bit, it might be the lingo. So these are my, some of my favorite, um, in tech, I like to have things that are relevant to the fashion, the cosmetic, but I also like to see things in different ways. So I have always one tech um, uh, newsletter and I like the, the lifestyle. Leanlux.com is an interesting one because it's very short, it's very general, and then they have um, a little cocktail of information that is always fun to, to watch uh, too. But book, so I listed um, one book, which is uh, The Adaptation Advantage. Um, I listed a podcast that um, is very interesting. It's Esther Perel is doing How's Work. So she's somebody who is specializing into couples therapy. And she's been doing a podcast about work relationship. So it's interesting for me because it's about HR. It's about, you know, relationship between people. So that's one of the ones I add. And I... I gave you a little tab for learning. I think it's important to be keeping um, track of what you're learning. These are some of the classes I've done. Um, I've done more, but I didn't have time to list them all. They're very different. Um, I listened to Unlearning for Change, um, Charles Eisenstein, who's very interesting. Um, I've learned a storytelling, also for change, bizarrely, uh, by Acumen, which is a very interesting one, and it's free. Um, most of these um, courses were actually free, maybe not Charles Eisenstein. Um, so I said to some of you, I've been updating Slack. I'm going to invite you all to a Slack channel. I'm very happy to be um, giving you um, offline, or it's actually online too, but off uh, Zoom a way where you can connect with each other and speak and share information, share your best newsletters, share all that information. Uh, I've had to adapt and learn the tips and tricks of Slack. I've, um, you know, as some of you know, I've done the teachable course on online courses. Um, I've been also interested in design thinking. So that's one of the, the class I've taken over the years. One of the things I find very interesting, there are two, is book clubs. So um, Heather, who's done this book, has a book club. So every week she discusses her book, which is a great way, if you don't have the time to read, to follow the book along with the author. I know Simon Sinek is doing one. It's free. It's online every Tuesday. I think one of you is, is following. Um, Heather's doing one, I think also on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Um, so that's a great way also to be learning because you're not only learning from the author, but you're learning from the chat and all the questions that people are asking and recommending. So there you go. And lastly, I know this one is a bit, maybe it's a bit cheesy, but that's where progress and practice makes perfect. Um, there's this, I spared you the first two lines, but um, watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. And I think the first ones is watch your thoughts become your ideas, your ideas becomes your action, et cetera. And I wanna say that, you know, if you do a little action and you have that little sheet for you for your career, it's a great way for making it a habit. And that habit builds into your career and, you know, in your next step. So I'm going to stop my screen. I know I went, I speak fast and I went fast, but I hope this was useful. I'm going to look at the, the chat if there's any question. And I'm happy to, so I'm going to send you the link to this Excel. It's, um, 
you can do anything you want with it or not do anything <laughs> at all. Um, it's up to you. But I think that um, when you're looking for a next job, and you should be of thinking what is, you know, what you're going to be looking for in two years, what's your dream job in two years, um, start putting together a little, um, um, a little journal. It's basically your little career journal. And you can add things. I'm happy um, if you have any additional ideas uh, that you want to share with me. Uh, I thought on the first page that we should have maybe the name of the ideal job, uh, put your compensation, your ideal compensation. You know, it's like kind of your little career journal in Excel um, that you can really look up and give it a look. And maybe it's, you know, you don't do it every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe it's a Saturday thing. You just put two hours and do everything together. Just make it your own. But again, if you take vitamins for your health, if you go to the doctor, if you do your annual checkup and, you know, dental cleaning, you should be doing something also for your career. And I think this is, you know, one way you can start. Um, so I'm going to take your questions, but if you want to jump in. So first question for Solange. Um, what do you think about the saying that one doesn't get a job through a job posting, that jobs are only posted to fulfill labor requirements and that the job will eventually be filled via network in the house? Kind of that in a roundabout way. The, yes. The fact that you can apply to as many jobs as you want, but ultimately jobs are literally found and offered yes. through your whole network. What yep. do you think of that? So I think, Solange, that it's a great question and you're actually one week ahead because that is what we're going to discuss into next week. So, Sorry so, about that. No, 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 no. I think it's great. So this is what, what I'm asking you to do um, in this week is the planning. Yes, you might apply to job posting. And I do think that there's some job posting postings that will be, you will be responded. I you know, don't believe, I think, yes, a big part might be uh, for labor requirement. Um, but... I think it will, no matter what, give you an idea of what are the jobs out there, uh, what are the job descriptions, looking at, you know, what you're missing in the skill set and if you can learn. Um, I have, so I have one mentee, uh, Laura, who was looking for a job and she was working at Joe's Coffee um, for a long time and I was like, Laura, enough, you have an HR degree, it's time for you to get a real job and it took her a while, but she applied. And she's now working for an insurance company and um, in the HR department. And she is using a uh, computer um, uh, application that she, had, she knew nothing about. And she was scared when she, before she got the interview and she said, I, got, I know nothing about this application there. It's, it's one of the requirements. And I just said to her, look it up online. Look if there's a YouTube tutorial just to give the, you know, um, understand what it is about and saying that, you know, you're very willing to learn, you've researched it and you're open to it. And she ended up get, getting the job. What I'm saying is what I gave you today is just to start listing um, uh, opportunities. Because Solange, it's true that you might be through a friend, it might be in your network, but if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know what's out there, it's hard to ask your friends for that dream job. So I totally agree. I a hundred percent agree. Your tool is, is awesome. Okay. It, it's just an added question. I'm okay. not, I'm not uh, arguing your tool. I mean, your tool is absolutely great. It's, it's a, it's really well done. It's precise. I don't, I don't disagree on anything in the tool. You know, so, so the tool is almost like, um, uh, and, and thank you very much, but the tool is almost like the container. And yeah. then next week, what we'll call is because you've seen some of those job description, because you've seen which companies are hiring, then when you connect with your network and your peeps, you know, all of a sudden you say, okay, I'm interested in that. And I can't even remember the, the, the name of it, but I'm interested in that um, client partnership director role, which I didn't know it had a name. I didn't know what client partnership director was but now you know i am aware of it and now i can say hey does your company have a client partnership director because if not you know here i am and i've seen a job description and i've seen the requirements and i could almost like say hey you know this is what i'm looking for 
I'd like, I'd like to add one element of response for Solange also. I mean, in the same vein of what you're saying, Agat. Um, you can use both. Uh, for example, you have companies like Amazon, right? You would see their listing on LinkedIn. Uh, but if you, if you know someone at Amazon and you have a job that you're specifically interested in, instead of responding on Amazon, I would advise you to go through that person because Amazon is actually encouraging their own employees to, um, to fast track people that they know and that would be interested for certain open positions within the company. So you would go to the front of the line uh, if you do that. So that would be a combination of the listing and the people that you know within the company that you're targeting. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thanks for that info. Nicola and Solange are my ahead of the team people because it's actually true. It, there's a lot of referral and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if after COVID there's even more referral because people will want to partner with, with um, their tribe, with the people they know and will want a recommendation. And there's often an incentive in a company for you to bring on talent. Maybe it's a $500 check, maybe it's, you know, but it's true that in HR, it is known that if you bring people that know you or are referred by you, then there's more chance that they perform well. So it's a great- So I can tell you when, when I had my own company, uh, between someone that was referred internally by one of my employees and someone that came cold, I gave 100% more attention to someone who was referred because from a cultural standpoint, uh, it, it made way more sense. And also, you know, if someone is gonna refer someone else they usually vetted, you know, you're not going to get a crazy person, you know, in, in your team. So it helps a lot, actually, referrals. Yeah, I, I agree, Nicola. We used to do that as well. We used to, but we used to do it on, on probably, it depends on the level of position you're looking at as well. And I, I would agree on top that, um, Nicola, it's very true because people feel also um, responsible because, you know, there's a friend there. So, you know, it's not that they can, you know, uh, claque la porte, as we say in French, they can, you know, like uh, slam the door and go away. They'll feel responsible because they have a friend who's working there too. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. very good point. Um, uh, so cocooning, Leticia, I don't know. Cocooning could be an idea too. Um, built in New York is not bad too. Okay, so I'm gonna add these um, to the email I'll send you. Um, so the cocooning, <laughs> sorry, the okay. cocooning was more related actually to the person who was in spa before and he, who's looking for something new. And ah. the built in New York City is more a site for, uh, with a lot of startups and a lot of new companies that are created in New York. And it's a lot of tech companies, but you have also some, you have Peloton and everything in there too. So it's a, it's a good site also to look for positions. And very nice. And I think that's what is um, going to be very interesting. As much as I'm putting out their information, I'm, I'm really, you know, researching um, to put all this for you. Um, some of the best tips have come from you. So that's why we're creating the collective. And that's why I want to invite you to this Slack channel is for you to help each other. I completely firmly um, am a believer of the collective intelligence. Um, so, you know, we're, what we're going to put is trying to put documents that every one of you can add. Um, you know, uh, I know I spoke with Vincent earlier and he has my, his whole list of newsletters that he, he shared. And I want to finish the, 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 um, to answer your questions, but, uh, actually Vincent, I, um, who's part of the call, I've given him the link to the document that I'm shared with you. And I've asked him to fill it for himself and to see if he, it was useful for him. Um, so Vincent, I don't know if you want to share your screen or if you want actually just to talk about it for two minutes. I don't want to, to you know, uh, it takes everyone time because I'm realizing it's already six. Uh, are cover letters used, so useful on LinkedIn? I don't know. I've, I personally don't think, uh, I think that cover letters are useful. Um, but I would like to say that if we find a new, ways of re a new way of resume, that is more personal, then it would skip that. I think that the cover letter is that personal thing of this is where I am, this is my story. And the resume is that, you know, didactic back uh, the past um, set in stone things. 
So what I would like to offer is this new type of resume that kind of covers, that says, you know, that's a bit like your story at the beginning, your motto, what you believe in, and put that to combine. The reality is if you have the skills, which are going to be on your resume, and you get the interview, you're most likely a really good uh, contender. You're, you're legit. Um, the cover letter is really to give a bit of the, the flavor. But if you have done your soft skills, if you have put, you know, um, maybe a more personal with your values, um, that should be more what is interesting. So just to follow up on that, Agat, mm -hmm. uh, when you apply on LinkedIn, you either have, you know, easy apply through LinkedIn or you're sent to the company's, you know, application mm -hmm. uh, process and website. Um, are you aware of anything that, you know, would say that, you know, people who don't provide cover letters, I have a tendency to think that cover letters were probably useful in the, in the eighties when they or the nineties, when he was actually, you know, sending a letter with a resume and the whole thing. But now, you know, they would be kind of all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so are you, are we being penalized if we don't include a cover letter? Do you know if there is like an algorithm that say, oh, this guy doesn't have a cover letter. So these resumes goes to a different stack. Or are you being advantaged by putting a cover letter? Do you know anything I, about that? I wish I had a, um, there was one response, but I think it's going to be a case by case. For example, you just said it very nicely that at Amazon, you have much more chances if you know somebody who's working at Amazon to put you at the head of the line. And that has nothing to do with your cover letter is that they receive, you know, 500 um, emails. The reality of LinkedIn and easy apply is that because they made it easy apply, everybody and his brother and neighbor are applying. Um, I never post, so I'm a retained search company, so I don't post my positions, but whenever I've posted, all of a sudden I have 10 random resumes that have nothing to do because, you know, people are just sending the resume. So if you have somebody that you know, or if you have a link, that's the best way. And that's why I'm going to, next week, it's going to be all about, you know, getting that interview. How do you go into meeting people? And that's why this week, I want to show you that if you keep track and you nurture those relationships that are important, that's your really, that's your, your gold mine. It's all these contacts. And it can be really as simple as, um, I think recruiters are not going to be your best bet because I don't know, you know, which companies will still have the budgets to hire. But I think that, you know, your network, cont contacting people at companies that you, you value, that you're interested in, in connecting with, sharing with colleagues, hey, you know, we work together at um, this company. How are you doing? Uh, I'm going to be looking for my next dream job in a year. I would love to catch a coffee with you or... I've read this, how are you doing? You know, what's next for you? Um, you know, how's it been at this company? Having really a conversation where you're exchanging with them and, um, and it can be very upfront, say, hey, I'm really looking, I'm, you know, I'm being let go. It's important for me to find a job. Um, if you have any ideas, um, this is my updated resume. Um, I really appreciate the time and happy to reciprocate in any way I can. But, you know, to be upfront saying what you like, what you you want. I think it's important. And um, I don't know success with Indeed.com. Um, Kelly said she had success with both. So I think, you know, it's for you to, the, 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 the Excel sheet and whatever you use, and it could be a, a journal, it could be a Moleskine for all I know, but it's just to keep track and, uh, and to see your progress. I think that's, that's the way. Um, can your reference overlap with either your mentor or work friend? Absolutely. Yes. Um, clue, same with Apple. Many tech firm employ are, get paid for referral. Yes, absolutely. And would you recommend to also add people who are, were working for you as recommendation also? Yes. So in references, references can be of three types. Somebody who has managed you, um, that was, you know, your, you were direct report, but it could be a colleague and it could be also somebody you were managing. I think um, I've, I always ask, you know, it can even be a client or a, um, a source, uh, somebody that, um, um, how do I say, um, 
somebody who worked for you, uh, an affiliate or um, 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 I'm missing the word, but you know, maybe you're an events company and it's not either a client or a colleague, but maybe it's a the guy. Contractor? Who, like a, a contractor, contractor or something? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so it could be a contractor. It's somebody who knows you well. Uh, ideally, you have to have at least a manager or two, but it could be also, um, again, a colleague, um, somebody who's at the same level or a mentee. I think it's interesting when you have a mentee because it shows you know that you are a good manager and that you have somebody young speaking on your behalf, I think would be very good, especially if you're going for these startup company, companies where the teams are very young, you know, that might be a great way of somebody speaking you know, their language. Um, um, thank you. We service provider. Thank you. <laughs> um, voila. And thank you for all your questions. So if there's any other suggestion, um, let me know. Bye, Nico. Thank you for sharing and thank you for your advice. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. It was great. I'll be there next week. Bye. Um, if anybody has other um, questions they, they want, so as I mentioned, we're going to open a Slack group. Um, we're going to open um, the collective. So for the LinkedIn group, what I wanted, and I mentioned it to you, is LinkedIn, if I post at 10 a.m. and you arrive at 3 o'clock, you won't see my, the feed. And so I created a sur mesure collective. Anybody who's part of that collective will see that post for a while. So my, my community is more fashion and luxury and lifestyle. But, you know, if you're interested in being viewed by these people, when you post, join the, the, the collective LinkedIn. And you have, I cannot invite you if we're not a first degree connection, I think. So please send me an invitation and just say, you know, collective uh, group. Um, and I'll add you. But so that, you know, at least you will see your post will stick to a number of people and you can do that with mine and of course more re or more relevant groups in your industry for example if you put in the hr if you have an hr group just put it in hr so that your your post but you have to post within also that um, group but just fyi for 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 the future so sorry i got can mm -hmm. you can you explain because the sur mesure collective exactly it might be a stupid question but um i know i'm part of it but what what is the purpose of the sur mesure collective because there's i have nothing on it yes so the purpose is um to create subgroups where you can share information and discuss more in detail all the exercise we're doing okay. so the idea is to so what we're doing here is me speaking and you receiving but as you as i i showed you and as i firmly believe a lot of the intelligence is is among you so what my belief is is that if we create small groups with like or kind people that have each other's interests but they're small enough like maximum 20 people per group then all of a sudden these are 20 people that you can add to your list right of people they are going to be your ambassadors. They will know you. They will know at which stage you are, what you're looking for, and they will become a bit, you know, your, they will be your ears and eyes on the market. So the idea is that often we have uh, references, uh, we have a colleague, um, maybe we have a coach, but in the career department, you know, you have to surround yourself with a bigger tribe, you know, people that you feel very comfortable talking with. I've seen you all on the call, so of course, you know, feel free to call me, but I want you to be there for each other in your domains. And uh, so the idea is to create collective. I will um, host the Zoom once a week, but I'm gonna give you tools. And ideally, I want you to become your own. It's almost like a, you're each coaching each other. You see, you're gonna be each um, providing um, feedback and intelligence and advice to each other. And that's gonna be where um, you can, you're gonna be each other's sounding boards, for example. So for example, the arts and culture and retail 
um, we can put together, you can put together your um, newsletters together, right? So I have a group that is a consultants. It's all the consultants in, in the luxury that I created. So we have one guy who is a CEO, one guy who is at um, a jewelry company, uh, one who is a creative director, um, one woman who's in digital, and one woman who is a consultant and more retail. And every Tuesday we get together. And during that hour, what happens is that, yes, it's kind of a mastermind um, crowdsourcing. Yes, it's very interesting. It's exactly that, uh, Juan, thank you. And so every Tuesday we meet at noon and like clockwise and we say, okay, so the, world, the girl in digital will give me information that I didn't have, I didn't see on my radar. She'll tell me of new things that is happening in her world. But also um, the person who's in retail, more like me, you know, he will even speak with clients that I didn't have time to speak with, or he'll hear about somebody at Gucci that I would be interested in understanding what's happening. Um, they'll also keep me posted on a new, um, you know, an article that they thought would be interesting. You know, we become each other's... Um, network and refer referral. So we all know what's happening. Um, we know, you know, oh, I got started this course. Okay, if somebody's interested, I can send her that. I know that um, Julien is starting his own sweater company and, you know, he's looking for um, fabric and investment. So I know that and I'll keep that in my brain. And, you know, if, if an opportunity come, he's on my radar. Basically, you're going to expand a little bit the, 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 the team radar. So it's kind of a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So Vincent, do you want to share a little bit or talk about how you used it, if you, it was useful for you or modification? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess I can share my screen. All done. Yay. Uh, here you go. Can you see my screen? Yes. I mean, I'm seeing so, it. Yeah. So like, as uh, I got mentioned, um, I get a quick end on this document like yesterday, um, you know, just to like try and figure it out how it's working. So um, I guess I haven't really used like the first, uh, the first tab, like uh, weekly planning. Um, so we'll go directly to the second one. So for like companies, like I recently had an interview with, uh, with a hit enter in Paris. Uh, so, you know, like I just follow like uh, the amazing template of Hagatz and, uh, you know, like mentioned like uh, the, the website of the company, like the, the industry, the contact of a person. And um, yeah, and like application statue. So obviously here, uh, I just like mentioned the first interview, waiting for a second one. Uh, and eventually like a uh, follow-up. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can put the position um, LinkedIn, right? The disc job description. Oh, they yeah, didn't like, have a job description. For this one, they don't have any job description, but you know, like there, yeah, like eventually. if you're like a job description, I will, I, will, uh, I will do that for sure. Like for people, like uh, very recently, I just put like free, free example, just for, just for like, just for an example. Uh, I contact like uh, some some people like in uh, in Dubai, in Mexico, uh, in Milan. So same, you know, like people, company, the roles, uh, email, LinkedIn, uh, first meeting, um, recent interaction dates, and uh, and yeah, like I, I schedule like a, um, a follow up with my updated resume and portfolio. So a good way to like uh, knock at their door. I want to say Vincent is also, if you're in a webinar that's interesting, um, you can always uh, put the person, send them a LinkedIn saying, you know, great talk at the webinar, I like your slides or whatnot, and add them to your link. And just, you know, two weeks, it doesn't have to be uh, in person, um, but you know, that they, they know you and they accept your connection okay. and the, the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Get it, okay. So for the market intelligence, uh, I just, you know, like I just list a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of, uh, of website I'm using uh, daily, to be honest, like mm -hmm. almost like daily, I go to, to all these websites. I wake up very early, spend an hour on all these websites. 
uh, getting some uh, getting some information, you know, like gathering some information into art architectures, creativity, tech, social, fashion. So it's a mix of French French and uh, English website. Um, I had to your own document, Agat, uh, yes. documentary nice. and Instagram because I watch like often documentary. Right now I'm I'm, uh, I'm watching this one on uh, on Apple TV. It's about uh, its home. It's a beautiful documentary about. Um, like great architects around the world. Like we use like, well, like we, we are using like um, some like, you know, sometimes it's, it can be like 3D printing in Mexico. It can be like a, a house made from bamboo in the middle of Thailand. It's very interesting. And, uh, and for everyone, I really recommend like uh, CNBC, like it's on YouTube um, every day almost, or like twice a week or more. Like they release like a video of like 15 minutes up to 20 minutes, sometimes it's six minutes. It's very like, it's, it's a very short format, it's a snack format. And they give you like, a, they provide you like with a lot of economical information, uh, like, like for like industry, like, like the, the rail, like the, 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 the features of the aviation, like the economy after coronavirus, stuff like that, super interesting. And so Instagram for like, uh, you have like no also like some snack contents, um, but you can find and it's, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So yeah, just add a bunch of that. And Great. learning as you did. Uh, mm -hmm. I just had like uh, rec the, the recent like class ID, the, like, uh, like yeah. that. Just very good. Review, yeah. mm, thank you, really thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Vincent, because um, yeah, I'm, I appreciate um, the work you've done. Look, I think it's an easy format. I don't want to, you to think that I'm adding another layer, but I think that if you're doing some of this, then keep track of it. And it's, it's supposed to be very easy that you don't feel that, you know, it's a, another to do. But if it's your career and it's gonna be, you know, the making you money and it's gonna be bringing you joy for the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I think it's worth um, spending a little time in it. Anybody wants to to jump in or um, Stephanie? Yes, the, to, the 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 next resume will come. Um, I've actually sent it to Vincent uh, to test it. Um, I've had so much work uh, to understand how to integrate my Slack with my Zoom to create the masterminds and to to you know, provide all this, um, that I have to say that it's on my to-do list. And yes, we'll, we're, we're gonna get there. Um, and thank you, Donna. I know you have to leave um, and, uh, and everybody has to leave. So uh, I'm happy to stay if anybody wants more questions. If not, au revoir, uh, merci. Hi, Flore, I see you. Um, Thank you again, it was great. And you have my ac access to my agenda if you want to have a more one-on-one, -on -one, um, you have my Calendly and I'll be very happy to, to connect with everyone. Cheers. <laughs>